out of sight, out of mind. neighborhood and of its people who did not want to go. I don't want no money. I want my home. The old man is old. See how the old man is old? No more. That's enough. I don't want to get out. I, I sent my two daughters. They don't want to get out because they spent a lot of money. Plenty of money they spent in this place. We not get none for nobody. Never. Hi. Welcome to the West End Video Newsletter. Uh, tonight, we're going to do a show about We've shown this show, I think, twice in the past, or maybe even three times in the past. It's called Lost Neighborhood. It was an ABC documentary about uh, tearing down the West End. They did it in 1962, and, uh, and it shows more or less what was happening at that time. The reason, I, reason I'm doing it is because Cain Simonian died, uh, and if people don't know who Cain Simonian was, he was the original head of the BHA, which became the BRA, and uh, he was the, uh, I guess, executive director for a while there, too. Uh, and there were all these articles about Cain Simonian. And uh, so, some of the things, I don't want to beat up on anybody that's dead, but I, I would just like to say this. Uh, they wrote in, the, in his obituary, uh, they quoted uh, an article that was done in, uh, in the Globe in, on January 4, 1999, and he said that the project was supported by Jordans, Filene's, Gilchrist, Raymond's, the Chamber of Commerce, MGH, the Retail Board, Real Estate Board, the Herald, the Post, and your own newspaper, meaning the Globe. And you know why? Because it would provide warm bodies to buy silk stockings and pantyhose from the stores. There are people in real estate who believe that if the West End hadn't been cleared, there would be no government center, no development of Faneuil Hall, or the waterfront. That is what Cain Simonian said in this article. What the obituary stopped at was it stopped there and the next paragraph in that original article, because I have it, and, uh, and you can see it in a minute, uh, is that uh, he said, we were afraid that the West End would become a black neighborhood, and nobody wanted that. At the time, in 1990, there was a big squawk by the NAACP. Uh, Cain Simonian apologized to him on the board, and it like, sort of just slid away quietly. I guess I'm not going to let it slide away quietly. I'm going to bring it up, and uh, I basically, uh, you know, it, it infuses a, a little bit of racism into into the taking of the West End, okay? And uh, because they were scared the West End was going to become a black neighborhood, even though I'm white, I had to pay the price of racism because I had to, they took my neighborhood and they threw me out because they were scared that my neighborhood beca may become black, okay? so. I want to show this, uh, this video again. Uh, it gives you what people were thinking in those days. Some people think it's a little controversial. Uh, Cain Simonian isn't in it, but uh, uh, we'll show it. And it's called Lost Neighborhood, done by ABC. Uh, uh, it, was, it was a very good show. And uh, roll tape, Joe. People just don't like to be told uh, by an emissary of the city, the state, or the federal government. They just don't like to be told. They, re they regard it as uh, something out of the page of Adolf Hitler, that a, uh, a person representing our government on any level can walk right in. And simply because they say that the home or the property is blighted, move them out and tear the property down. Uh, urban renewal becomes a very, very emotional uh, subject to many people. I lived in the West End, the same apartment which I loved, had a marvelous landlord, some of the most wonderful neighbors on earth. And I liked the West End. We lived there, as I said, for 20 years. We had to move. And actually, in the three and a half years that I've been living outside the West End, I, I still have a feeling that I'm voting out, that I'm waiting to go back home. To Vanda Zakovich, a home is more than just a living place. 12,000 of her former neighbors feel the same, and millions of Americans are learning the same feelings. 
For in these 1960s, we're dedicated to renewing our cities, tearing down the old to replace it with the modern. Many times, it is a case of the common good versus the desires of the individual. But once torn, the old neighborhood can never be replaced. That is the subject of this program, the lost neighborhood. The city of Boston is proud of its landmarks. Boston shows devout reverence for historic shrines. Once there was a neighborhood in the shadows of Fennel Hall, it was called the West End. Admittedly, it was not a place of beauty, but it was the chosen home of 12,000 Bostonians who within it found love and warmth, shelter and contentment. And what else is home? But it is today's thinking that the old and decaying parts of a city, and Boston has some, must be replaced. You must keep pace with the glitter of new cities. The process by which this is done is called urban renewal. Now, urban renewal is a city planner's phrase. Reduced to its simplest terms, it has most often meant knocking down the old and erecting the modern and imposing, which will attract new businesses, new money, and new people. This happened to the West End. The old has been knocked down. The West Enders are gone. Luxury apartments for 450 families now stand where once there were row upon row of well-worn, well-filled brick houses for 12,000. Other buildings are slow in rising. Even the name has changed. They no longer call it West End. Now it is Charles River Park. Efren Kaplan, a Boston banker, gives a view. There's only one way that the West End could have gone, and it was down. The people there were getting poorer, the uh, tenements there were falling down, the fire hazard was increasing. There was only, and there's only one way you can cure a place like the West End, and that is to wipe it out. It's a, a cancer in the long run on the community. This may seem ruthless, but this is an aspect of urban renewal, and the uh, human equation to this uh, somewhat ruthless uh, removal of a cancer in the city's uh, economic structure uh, uh, hasn't uh, been entirely found yet. Supposedly everybody should be glad to leave, but our research team consisting of uh, 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 psychiatrists, social psychologists and social scientists soon discovered that for many of the families there to live in the West End meant a privilege rather than a bad necessity. They had a beautiful recreation area right next door along the Charles River. They had a way of life in their streets, of a lot of communication from family to family, across the street, from window to window. A great many ways had been developed of companionship and mutual help in an informal way within large families and from family to family, which allowed them to put up with a bad housing with a, just the same, a sense of relative comfort. And many of the homes, looking perhaps ugly from the outside, were well appointed inside and had many attractive features arranged by the families in their efforts to create a comfortable life. Outsiders always find it easier to make realistic appraisals on human problems. Losing one's home is a human problem. And when you talk to the West Enders, you hear the talk of the heart rather than realistic appraisals, which is only to be expected, for even in the 20th century, human beings are largely governed by their hearts. This is Wanda Zakovich. Telling about the uprooting of the 12,000 men, women, and children in the West End isn't an easy thing to do in just a matter of minutes because there's, there's just too much agony, too much heartbreak and chaos. <laughs> There are only two or three of the old West End streets still standing. They're waiting their turn. Even Marino, the hurdy-gurdy man, seems to be waiting his turn. Do hurdy-gurdies play for modern buildings? 
If you want to see what it is the West End used to be, then you have to go to other neighborhoods in Boston, neighborhoods still standing. I would call the West End a typical American community. Uh, the American neighborhood as we knew it in former times before the era of urban renewal. We were a mixture of many, many uh, nationalities, many races, colors of skin. We were teachers and artists. We were waitresses and plumbers. We were retired bankers, all sorts of people. This is the North End. The old North Church towers above the card players. If the bricks are different, the air is the same as the old West Ends. Home is more than just a place where you eat and sleep. And you had your little grocery stores, a person that could go in and talk to her grocer, a meat market man. Uh, uh, she could teach him in Russian and Jewish and Polish and French. She could buy her own special kind of bread, her own cheeses, the different brands of coffee and the ground that she, the grind that she liked. It was just a, a mixture of everything and anything. And yet, the most fantastic thing was we all got along and loved each other. We really did. There were never any neighborhood squabbles. You could walk through the streets at 2 in the afternoon or 2 in the morning. You never had to look over your shoulder if you met anybody walking along. It was the same familiar face that you saw year after year. In fact, America was everything that the world is crying for today when they speak about the brotherhood of man, of loving our neighbor and getting along. And yet, when they had this in the West End, they destroyed it. An area is taken as the West End was because it was by the riverside and where people were paying anywhere from, say, 20 to $150 a month rent, they could now get anywhere from 135 to $600 a month rent. It was just the money alone. And when the West End was cleared against the people's wishes, this was what was built, luxury-type apartments. We weren't immune. But when you saw the older people, especially the ones who came from Europe and took the voice of authority without any question, but who knew that there was something wrong. You didn't know what to say to them when they met you on the street and they cried, and they'd stand there, an old man and an old woman with their arms around each other. This is where they had lived for 40, 50, 60 years, the only home they knew, and everybody was going, and they, most of them really had no place to go. Then too, we had a lot of the elderly folks who live alone. I know of the women, I know of women who lived in the Charles Bank homes. And a lot of them had lived there 20, 30, 40 odd years. But they knew each other and their neighbors knew them and they knew enough to drop in on them during the day, ring their bell, see if they were fine, or they'd see them out in the street and knew that they were well. Oh, the West End used to look nice though. It was home-like. It was very nice, I thought. I learned to like the people in the West End and uh, they were all nice to me. And uh, since I've been up here, they go by and talk with me. Well, not so much now as they was when, before they began to tear down that part of it, see. But they're, they combine, there isn't one of them that doesn't talk to me as they pass by here. Then the woman who lived next door to me who was moved to a housing project in Charlestown I came downstairs one morning, she was standing in my doorway. This was on the other side of the West End. And she said, hi. She said, you don't mind if I stand here? And I said, well, no, why should I? And she knows she said, I'm watching them take my house down. And I was really appalled because that was something that even I didn't have the courage to do. I couldn't watch them tear down the house I lived in. And yet this woman came back for three days in a row until the house was torn down. I never saw her again.
I know for a fact that people do come back to the West End. You meet them in the grocery store. That's the funniest thing. The MTA station, there's a young fellow who works there weekends, and he said to me, I can't get over it. I see the West Enders coming through the subway every weekend with their shopping bags. He said, they still do their shopping down here. But this is habit. And I think it's just a nice feeling to know that with the world the way it is today, we knew something. Even if we'd have lost it, we did have it. And I, I think it's just been a blessing knowing that we had it. Some people were born in the area, some had moved in as youngsters with their family, and very few people moved out of the area. It was a wonderful place to bring up children, for instance. We had the Charles River boating uh, program, we had swimming pools, we had the, uh, the little ba baseball leagues that the young fellows played in, and at night their fathers had their softball teams down there that they went down to after dinner. the old European idea of a child was brought up with a bit of discipline. He was taught to love his God and his country. He was taught that things were wrong or right. And the child wasn't confused, I think, under those ideas. few children play along the banks of the Charles River. These old playgrounds seem too ample for the needs of the 450 families who now occupy the two huge new apartment houses in this bright, modern Charles River Park. The playgrounds are the only thing that is left of the old West End, and they were originally designed to handle the children of 12,000 families. Even if empty, they're lovely playgrounds full of sun and air and the fresh breezes from the River Charles. But the playgrounds are somewhat mournful. They have lost their children as well as their neighborhood. The case for replacing the West End with these apartment buildings is made by the chairman of the Boston Redevelopment Authority, the Right Reverend Monsignor Francis J. Lolly. For many years, Boston has been a place where people looked over their shoulder at the past rather than on their tiptoes looking into the future. As a result, uh, the old has been preferred and new investments, new ideas, new money has passed Boston by and has settled in other parts of the country. One of Boston's first renewal projects was the so-called Charles River Park, which replaced the ancient and very much honored west end of Boston. This was a part of our city which had many picturesque qualities, but on analysis and statistical survey, proved to be a thoroughly blighted area. It was what uh, we'd have to call in the language of planners, a city slum. The word slum is a loaded word. It tells you how the user of the word feels. It doesn't tell you anything about the thing which he is talking about. So that if I use the word slum with reference to a particular section of a city, this simply says in some way that I disapprove of, that I don't like, that I devalue that area. When the redevelopment authority, the newspapers, the rest of society says to them, you are living in a slum, this is a blighted area, this is something which can be destroyed and which is expendable, it hits the person in the very core of his being. Because this means I am no good, I am expendable, I can be shoved around by society. We don't care. Let them say what they want. We were happy here. 
people kept coming in, like I said, from different statements and said to us, well, how could you live here? You know, this is slum. These are our homes, and we're happy here. The question is, whose happiness is most important? The rest of Boston who will glow with civic pride in the shiny and renewed area, or the affected men and women who have been uprooted? If the fate of the West End was for the greater common good, the sacrifice was not accepted by its dispossessed. Resentful or not, they had to move. My hopes for the future are that I'll meet some people that are like West Enders. I doubt if we'll ever have another West End like we've had. I hope my children are more, uh, will be adjusted. I hope my mother will be happy. I just hope that uh, we'll all lead a more contented life now that this is finally over with, now that we have to move and we know we have to go. And uh, I just hope that we'll find peace. That's all. Understandably, there have been political repercussions to the urban renewal projects. The politicians are acutely sensitive to it and to its impact on their constituents. They see it as a mixed blessing, fine for the city, a trial to their constituents. Councilman Peter Hines takes his stand. I think most people misunderstand completely the problems of politicians like myself in dealing with this urban renewal pro program. We are not against us. This city council, quite to the contrary, has devoted extraordinary effort in trying to get the Urban Renewal Authority to do more. Our major quarrel with the program is that it's not moving fast enough. But no matter how fast or how slowly the program moves, you cannot escape, you will never escape, the human problems involved. The great error, the great mistake, was that at the time that the West End development was going up, there was not also going up in other areas of the city, low two and three family, low rent duplex houses, two or three family houses, or garden type apartments that could reasonably accommodate the people dislocated at rents that they could afford. There was nothing else wrong, in my opinion, with the West End development, other than, I would add, uh, this one point. In this whole picture of urban renewal, you can't forget people. It is not likely the people will permit themselves to be forgotten. Alston, another area of Boston, is somewhat removed from the West End, but it too figures in the urban renewal scheme. And like their fellow Bostonians who dwelt in the West End, the Alstonians are not happy. Moreover, they're angry and articulate. Their voices have been and will continue to be heard. We have been bothered here now for the last two years by these people from the BRA. They've come through here and practically forced their way into our homes to measure them and to set them up so they can take them. And nobody around here wants their urban renewal, nor do we want their relocation. If they want to get us out of here, they're going to come in and take us dragging, kicking and screaming out of the house and throw our furniture after us because we're not going. I don't want no money. I want my home. The old man is old. See how the old man is old? No more. That's enough. I don't want to get out. I, I said to my two daughters, they don't want to get out too because they spend a lot of money. Plenty of money they spend in this place. You're not getting out for nobody. Never. I am quite certain that under the present setup that uh, the rights of people are being respected as much as possible. But it's silly to say that that when you're having a major uh, municipal hysterectomy like this, uh, that, uh, so that everybody's going to come out exactly the same. You just aren't. And uh, some people are going to be hurt, and their rights, in my opinion, will not be entirely respected. But when you're moving thousands of people around, you are really doing it for the good of the whole, and the, and the, the, the people of Boston will benefit enormously from this.
The problem of urban renewal is the burning question of the 60s, and in the satisfactory solution of this problem lies the economic future of the entire country. From the Bunker Hill project in Los Angeles to the real Bunker Hill, where it all started here in Boston, the entire country is on the move in this program of revitalizing and rebuilding our cities. 75% of all of the citizens of America reside either in cities or metropolitan areas. And the stake which all of us have, regardless of our station in life, in the satisfactory resolution of this burning question is entirely enveloped and invested in the future of our nation. We come to the end of the West End and its story. There will be those who remember, those who live there, those who saw it torn down, perhaps even those who tore it down. For the rest, it is gone. If urban renewal is the burning issue of the 60s, then for all cities there remains the question, is it possible for the needs of a modern city to be dovetailed with the desires of the individual to no one's hurt? It is an old question, one of the oldest. It merely reoccurs in a new setting. For cities are collections of buildings, and buildings are a cluster of homes, and homes are where people feel safe, warm, and protected. On sunny days, Marino still takes out his hurdy-gurdy, but there are fewer and fewer places for him to go. Well, welcome back. Uh, I'm Jim Campano, your host, and uh, I hope that you enjoyed the, the Lost Neighborhood. It, uh, I find it historically in, uh, invigorating, uh, you know, enlightening. Uh, it teaches you a little bit about what Boston was in the 1960s. And uh, I, really, uh, I really enjoy showing it every so often because people forget uh, what the West End was all about. And they have a tendency to say that uh, what we're saying now is a lot of nostalgia and that we're making it up. Uh, a lot of those people you've just seen were saying the same things that we've been saying now, they were saying in 1962. So, you know, it sort of validates our position, you know, the West End position. So I guess that's about it. I'll see you at the next West End video newsletter. Thank you for watching. If I could, but my heart is blind. You are gone outside, but not out of my mind.